Uh, welcome back my gardening friends well we're down to the last few parsnips I've got to get these sown so if you want to see how I grow my uh, parsnips uh, for those uh, new to my channel then uh, we'll uh, show you this bed's been half prepared all the holes have been done so I use a five inch five foot crowbar earlier on in the season I think it was before the winter we did four big holes and poured down some liquid manure from the runoff bin so that'll be in the bet bottom now waiting for those tap roots to go and feed off them that point there we're actually in the original soil And then we uh, top up with uh, some cocoa koi, which I didn't prepare. Silly Billy. Oh, silly Terry's back. Now I used to use a cone to put the compost in, but I actually mulch with this cocoa koi now. Uh, it's what I find dumped, fly tipped by those unscrupulous uh, growers. So we bring that almost up to the surface. Yogurt pot lid, slide that in. And you'll see the reason for that. Some uh, Humex uh, compost new, just to, uh, to uh, get the seeds in. And uh, we put three seeds per station. This is the uh, Parsnip Gladiator F1, uh, one of my favorites. Nice easy seed to place out. That's that one done. And then for the uh, little green airs, I'll uh, try and put the uh, video link up to that one. Normally this is all well prepared and everything's well soaked like this is, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Pick those up because they'll be everywhere. So I'm going to uh, do a little bit of pause and record and we'll get the rest of those done. So that's uh, those done for a, another year. Three seeds per station. Take out the weakest out of the three or however many germinate and then we leave uh, just the one in and we'll show you uh, the parsnips that I sowed in September as an experiment, they're doing really well but I do think I'm not going to be self-sufficient with parsnips now we're down to our last two and I don't think the others will be ready for another month or two but hopefully next year because we've sowed those earlier on and we've got another lot here we will uh, hopefully be self-sufficient in parsnips. I'll just put the cover on. Triple protection. Just helps keep the wind and gets that soil up to temperature. It's the 11th of uh, April today and we, we're still getting snow showers so instead of rain showers in April we're getting April hail and snow showers but uh, these are looking quite lush now I removed all the old dead leaves that uh, didn't survive the winter 
take the old leaves off and it just helps the plant put its energy into the, uh, the fresh leaves and they were sowed on the 20th of September last year so these are out to the elements now parsnips uh, don't mind the cold and hopefully we'll have a, a nice crop later on in the year these are the uh, carrots we sowed for uh, the challenge and uh, these have already been thinned out I think they may now be able to survive on their own. Whether you can actually see that or not. I can reuse the bottles then uh, on some of the others. There's one or two stations that didn't germinate straight away. with Family Farm Giant Veg Challenge uh, 21. So these were sown on the 21st of February. And they're coming on nicely. Just let's have a little close up because it's a little bit too far away. These definitely need uh, a little bit of fresh air now. So all the stations that have uh, taken, germinated, thinned out. This one here, and there was another one somewhere. The actual one at the back is actually now up and running. So now they look, uh, they look really nice. I'll get these uncovered. Those bottle tops can be used elsewhere. Some of the uh, carrots have germinated a little bit later than others. In fact, there's three there. So all I've done is uh, snip them off. Uh, I'll just check the rest. And the odd weed looks like some sort of tree. But that's what you'll get with homemade compost. So moving on from the February bed onto the uh, March bed, I'll just set you up. This one has got uh, three in. I've got to do a little bit of weeding. It's a bit awkward this time of the year with how cold it is. But uh, we'll probably select that one when they get a little bit bigger and maybe that one. But because that one's close to the edge, I might leave that one and uh, go for the centre one. Uh, the point of getting them spread out is so that we can uh, get a better carrot. The closer they are, the smaller they'll be. Not in all cases, but I have found that if you leave two together, they, uh, they will be smaller. So let's go and harvest some carrots. So this bed of carrots, we had the uh, Mockley Dwarf Forest sp spread by the carrot willow aphid. You might be seeing those end screens on a regular basis, but it's well worth a look. Uh, these were just sown very quickly and uh, sewn together uh, to cause one to fork but not, not bad carrots and these were actually sewn in their individual yogurt pots but they are showing their age now but they still get a fair bit of meat off them I'm hoping to do some carrots in the polytunnel hopefully they'll uh, be a little bit better but these didn't get any protection from the carrot fly because I thought it were high up now whether the carrot fly is actually in the soil I don't know but I'm not going to be using these beds uh, for carrots this time as you've seen I'm using beds that haven't had carrots in before and hopefully I can get rid of this uh, 
carrot fly uh, over the next uh, few years. And that'll do. Keep Mrs. K happy. These carrots were sown uh, in June of last year. Purple sprouting broccoli is doing really well and going to see how much we can harvest today. Well, harvesting claret sprouting broccoli in the snow. Again. So I've uh, teared that now. Excuse me. And oh, that basket's not going to last much longer. So 2.825, and I think I weighed these at about 3.750 or 700, 0.700. So today's harvest weight for team, hashtag team will it grow is 3.546. Some reason I've uh, misplaced my other piece of cardboard it's probably blew away in all those high winds but I'll uh, get those off uh, a previous uh, video that's a little vegetable harvest uh, in April a little bit more progress on the polytunnel I've got uh, six barrels all lined up there and uh, the water from here and the barrels have all been now uh, moved so we've got water in those barrels that was my intention keeping those barrels topped up because if we do have a dry april may i wanted to make sure i got as much water as i can so i'll be doing an update on that uh, as soon as i manage to get those polycarbonate window in polycarbonate window sliding window sheets in and get them working now i can concentrate on the other side I've picked up another cupboard. It'll either come in handy or it won't. The uh, garlic cloves that I put into uh, that rainwater, it's certainly colouring uh, colouring the water up now. And uh, oh, it seems like it's uh, swelling up as well. So those are going to be used to help prevent some of the bugs bar oh, gum that does smell Whew. i think i'd be uh, flying away if i got that whiff bar oh, gum that was strong i've started to put this pipe back now now those beds are built as you can see it runs down there uh, it's uh, gravity so that pipe there leads or will lead to those four barrels at the end of there and uh, we uh, put the pump in here it li pump lifts it up and then it gravity feeds down so the pump isn't actually uh, under pressure in my playlists uh, there's quite a few videos on uh, how i pump water around the allotments and save water etc don't forget the thumbs up thumbs down for the interaction and uh, please please leave a comment it all helps my channel be put places that uh, will get more views happy gardening to you all till next time my friends Tara for now.